Hayes Mega here and welcome to a KO Motor video, alright? Another KO Motor video. So, um, I did the show and tell and then we did a comparison with the other, um, with the Suron Motor and the QS165 Motor. Now uh, I'm going to go, uh, this video is about the uh, different um, sprockets or pulleys that you can install on the on the uh, KO motor, all right. More specifically, the KO motor factory spec motor here. Okay, the KO Mark II. This is their uh, most powerful motor at the moment. Okay, um, so the part that we will be we're more concerned with is the other side of the motor. So I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, this is how it is when you first get it. Okay. So the uh, the part we're most concerned with is this side of the motor, all right? This part with the shaft coming out, all right? So when you get your motor, it comes like this, and then uh, there's a mechanical locking nut, very similar to the same nut that's on the Suron, all right? Hopefully it's a better quality nut that's on the Suron. It kind of does look like it, okay? It's a 17. It takes a 17 millimeter to remove it, okay? So the question is. Will the Soron locking nut fit on this if I wanted to use it? All right, Hades Mega uses a Honda Grom axle nut for his, uh, for the Soron one. Okay, so let's see if this one fits. Yes, okay, so the threads on the shaft are the exact same spec as this. Okay, so just, just FYI, all right, um, you can, these are, this is the same nut that fits on the, the rear axle of the Soron Light B, okay? Um, this one uses a 19 millimeter. This one uses a 17 millimeter. Okay, this is from a Honda Grom. All right, I think it could be at the front or rear axle. Uh, now I know for a KLX 140, a Kawasaki KLX 140, they come in with the 17 like this. All right, but it's a Kawasaki nut. All right, I don't know where Kawasaki gets them from, but they got to be better than the Soron ones. All right, this one it looks pretty good. It looks like it's made out of stainless steel too. It looks pretty strong. Okay. Um, you don't want these to fail, but I don't, I've never had one that's come loose, all right? Because uh, I think the, the, the direction the motor spins in, it tightens this, okay? It doesn't loosen it. Okay, so this looks like it fits fine if you wanted to use this. All right, this is a Honda nut. That's what I'm using on my Soron, okay? Okay, and then what comes, there's a zip tie right here. I want to remove that. That holds the keyway on, or, or the key in the keyway, okay? Can you take it? Is it easily removable? No, and it, it's not in all the way too, by the way. I just realized that. I'm gonna have to, well, let, me, let me hammer that in. So, uh, okay, well, well, we'll see if we have to hammer it in. Okay, so that's how it comes, all right? It just comes with the, the nut and then the key, all right? That's it. Uh, so it's up to you what sprocket you're gonna use for it, all right? The counter sprocket for your primary drive. I've got four different options here, all right? This is what I got, all right? I actually have a brand new Soron one also, but it's okay. So here on the left, I've got sprockets, all right? This is, uh, these two are DB off-road front sprockets, all right, counter sprockets. Uh, this is for the 420 O-ring chain kit or a 420 chain. And this is for a 219 chain, all right? I don't use this one anymore because it's worn out. Um, and then this is a stock Soron pulley, and this is the pulley from uh, a QS165 motor, okay? The QS165 actually does come with the pulley. So that's one thing I'm kind of disappointed in this. You spend, I spent almost $3,000 for this motor combo, and I don't even get a pulley with it, <laughs> okay? Even the QS165, which is the cheapest motor out of the three, uh, it, it comes with a pulley, okay? So I'm a little disappointed there. So obviously, I'm pretty sure that the Soron one will fit. All right, so let's put that one on first. All right, I don't know how tight the tolerances are. Oh, there we go. It's just slid right on, all right? And it looks like we don't need to move that key. So the key is sticking out a little bit, a little bit from the end of the shaft, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. And so I have here, the stock spring washer, all right? This is like kind of like a uh, kind of a lock washer. So you want to have that on there. So we'll see if we, the QS165 cannot use that, all right? Because the 
the um, the nut is like a weird shape. All right. So I'm going to put the let's put the grom. Okay, that seems to fit on there just fine. It's a little bit of play, but it's probably because it's kind of worn out. Okay. So you would use this pulley if you have this the belt, all right? If you're still running the belt, then uh, this is the pulley that you would use. I kind of can't get this out of here. Oh, and the key just slid right out with it. Okay, that's why they put a zip tie around it. Okay, let's see if the, uh, man, this one is heavier. <laughs> the, uh, let's see if the uh, QS165 pulley will fit on there. I'm putting this back on my QS165 when I sell it, so I want to get a video of this, see if it works. No, it doesn't look like it works, man. This QS motor stuff, man, it's all out of spec. Yeah, it's too thick. It's too thick. It should just slide right in, right? Yeah, that's disappointing. Oh, there we go. It goes all the way back now. Yeah, it was just kind of wedged in there wrong. Let's put this one back in. Yeah, for some reason, it doesn't want to go all the way back. I think this key was in there wrong. Might have put the key in the wrong way. Well, I'm sure if you just gun it in... It'll go all the way in. <laughs> yeah, there's something up with the back of this. It will not go in. Well, I got I got it to go in earlier. Just saw. But I think this was in the wrong way. Oh yeah, what the heck? Okay, so yeah, uh, the uh, the QS pulley doesn't work okay so if you just happen to have a QS pulley on you it doesn't fit in here just the keyway is too small okay I just tried it so here's a Sauron one again okay Sauron one that fits on pretty, pretty good for some reason at the very end it doesn't want to go in I think there's something up with this key maybe it needs to be broken in or something I don't know. okay so yeah stock Sauron one fits fine obviously Okay, now we're going to try the 219 uh, sprocket. See how well that fits in there. All right, well, that slides right in. All right, it's got a little bit of play. Put the spring washer in there. There's a little bit of, a, there's like a millimeter from the uh, the inside to the, to the lip. Okay, but seems okay. It should be fine. Now let's use the Grom nut. Okay, seems to screw in there just fine. Okay, I'm sure that that extra play will be gone when I tighten it. So. <laughs> oh, I might put it in too tight. Yeah, let's gun it in real quick. Just real quick. Okay, I'm just going to gun it in lightly. nice and it's on there pretty nicely okay slides off nicely the key always wants to come off with it it's kind of annoying okay that's a DB off-road 219 counter sprocket okay now we're gonna try the, the DB off-road 420 counter sprocket okay this is the one I'm currently using right now Let's put this back on the shaft. Okay. 
line it up so the number should be facing outside okay fits in there fine same tolerances as the as this guy right here okay it's got a little bit of play I know right that's a lot of play dude oh, boy. <laughs> is that adorable look at how much play that is it's moving around a whole lot okay they make it unbalanced or something right Okay, it's fine when I put the uh, when I put the nut in there. Boy, this is kind of hard to move. You know, strong magnets, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's put the Suron one back in real quick. Those other ones had a lot of play. Surprise. Okay, this one's got this one has a little bit of play also. Let's let's gun this one in also. I didn't gun another one. Okay. I think the torque is supposed to be like 60 foot pounds or something. Okay, seems fine. had the face wires touching each other so like it was like magnetized that's what it was <laughs> okay all right so there you go so the one I'm going to be using is uh 420 chain so I'm just gonna put that one on right now okay and then we'll use the uh... okay I'm gonna lightly gun it on And then uh, I will uh, I will torque it when I have it on the bike. Just can't get a torque wrench on it. Oh, what is this? This is 17, yeah. This is not the right. This is does does it take a 19? No. Oh my God, this is a weird size. Hold on, guys. <laughs> I thought it was a 17. Okay, big surprise, guys. It uses an 18 millimeter guy. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if I want to use this. I think I'm gonna use the ground one. So I just found out this is an 18 millimeter. The 19 and the 17 didn't fit. So the uh, the stock the stock nut is a 17. The one that comes with the KO motor is a 18 takes a 18 millimeter socket. Okay, the ground takes a 19. Uh, you know what? I don't normally carry like a freaking 18 around if I had to do any kind of work on this motor in the field or whatever I'd rather have something that's easy to find 19 is a more common size so I'm gonna go with the 19 All right, so we're gonna put the old Grom locking nut back in okay, the one I had before okay so yeah I just found that out I didn't try it so surprise surprise Okay, there you go. So that was a little uh, video about like uh, what the different sprockets and stuff that I have on hand that you could use with this motor, all right? You can use DB Off-Roads spro front sprockets. They're really loose. Um, the, uh, the stock sore on one is kind of loose. And these ones, are pro they're probably all kind of worn out too. So, um, And uh, the QS165 pulley, you cannot use it, all right? Because the key is like different. He's like smaller or something for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I'm having problems with this QS165 stuff. 
but anyway um there it is and then uh when i put when i get it on the bike i'll torque it okay so i hope that was an informative and educational video thanks for watching those are the different sprockets that that Hayes Omega has on hand that he's tried with a KO factory spec motor. Okay, um, the one I will be using is a 420 chain. All right, 420 um, sprocket. Um, this thing is awesome. Uh, it has a master link, and you could easily remove the chain. All right, um, it makes swapping motors super duper easy. All right, because you don't have to remove the swing arm, or you don't have to take the belt out and all that stuff. Okay, so um, you just you just break the chain and then take the motor out then put the chain back on so i like it a lot better <laughs> okay all right here's we out thanks for watching uh okay so one of the things that Hayes mega has noticed uh, after i put the sprocket on is uh so if your chain if you're running a primary drive chain instead of a belt uh if your chain ever breaks or comes off or whatever um it could destroy this all right i just realized that um so these other motors they don't have anything sticking out on this side see nothing okay so if the chain comes off it's not really going to break anything all right but however if uh if your primary drive chain breaks and it bunch it and, and hopefully it ejects it through the back side right instead of the instead of here if but if potentially it could wrap around this all right and it could destroy this okay so that's one that's one thing i just noticed right now that could be a uh, some sort of a design flaw right the i i understand the reason they the reasoning they put the phase wires on this side instead of the other side was so they can make the the motor wider okay they couldn't do that if it was on the other side it's just too much junk going on on the other side of the motor however yeah there's something sticking out on this side of this case here all right and this is where the primary drive is now if your belt breaks it probably won't damage this all right but like on a motorcycle if your chain breaks comes apart or whatever um it'll wrap around this and it'll destroy this okay it'll probably destroy this and that could be all bad all right, so, so that's one thing I'm just beginning to, I just noticed right now after I put the sprocket on. So just FYI, <laughs> if you're running a chain, uh, if your chain ever comes off, that could happen, all right? Hopefully you'll be lucky enough it wraps around the rear sprocket and not the front sprocket, okay, this this sprocket. All right, so yeah, that could be all bad. <laughs> this is what I'm to say. Okay, just that's a, just a little uh, word, a, word of caution right there, all right? All right, here's we go. Okay, into interest of science, <laughs> scientific method, or okay, I'm just gonna, just since I'm such a nice guy, I'm gonna simulate what could possibly happen if your chain came up. I didn't think about just doing this. All right, so here's the chain. All right, chain breaks. All right, and it it will get, it'll wrap around this all right and it'll just keep on wrapping around it wrapping around until it gets to here Ooh. i know i'm probably scratching the crap out of the case all right oh look at that oh yeah look at just barely all right, it just barely contacts it. <laughs> so, what bad luck! If this this chain was probably about uh, three quarters of a length smaller or shorter, it probably wouldn't have hit that. All right, but yeah, there it is. All right. Also, it, it may not wrap up around it so nicely like that. All right, it may get kinked up and everything and stick out and yeah. So um, yeah, so. I suppose you could put the cover on. Yeah, you could put the... Yeah, you could probably put the plastic cover back on. It'll probably break that cover. But it'll it'll help protect this. All right, if this was to happen. All right, um, like I mentioned, if if you got a belt, this is probably not going to be a problem for you, okay? Belts don't normally damage the motor casing when they break, okay? Um, if you have one of those, like, aluminum... Uh, covers all right like the prickly one i've seen 
um, it may just snap off right off of the uh, right off of the um, yeah it may just snap these right off of the case poof all right it may or may not all right I, those are pretty strong I think I think those are CNC um, or it just may just stop all right you might just get lucky and it might just stop all right uh, because like the motor will just have some you know for, force on it you know hopefully hopefully w when the chain breaks you you back off right away <laughs> okay that's what I'm gonna say yeah so or or you get lucky and it gets caught on the back the back sprocket all right but yeah there it is all right that's what ha that's what could happen just like that oh yeah it's just like that it's pretty good oh yeah it still hits it see it hits it right here yeah so okay so that's uh that that's a demonstration of what could happen <laughs> if your chain if, you're, if this guy came apart on you all right or broke all right it would be all bad all i'll say all right fortunately that's a pretty strong chain that is very very this is very much stronger than the belt all right so hopefully hopefully that won't happen okay so yeah so okay yeah so this this will probably a separate this will be a separate video and it also be i'll put it together with my sprocket comparison video all right i I just found that out, all right, and I just simulated it for you guys, what could happen, okay? Um, it's the same thing that happens on regular motorcycles with chains, all right? It wraps around. Chains are very dangerous, all right? When when they break, it could, you know, it acts like a whip also, like it could cut your leg off or something, all right? I've heard some horror stories, all right? But fortunately, it's never happened to me. I've never really haven't had a chain break. Um, they always just kind of just come off, all right? But... Okay, so yeah, hopefully, yeah, if uh, if you force it to keep on going, it will probably break this off, all right? And then this is where the phase wires are, and who knows what's going to happen when that happens, all right? Um, sparks could go flying, fires could start happening, who knows, man? It could be disastrous, all right? Let's just hope that never happens. Yeah, <laughs> cross my fingers. I didn't have that problem with the stock motor, okay? I just realized that right now. All right, let's make out. Hope you learned something.